And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we are going to be cattle barons trying to make a lot of money, pesos, by selling off herds of cows. So we're going to be trying to look at El Gaucho here. This is a medium weight Euro game, uh, two to four players, plays in about 60 minutes, uh, where you're going to be going around trying to get some cattle, uh, selling off different races of cattle, uh, using some special actions and things like that. Let me show you how it's played and I'll see you on the other side. Here we have El Gacho set up for four players. In this game, you are a cattle baron trying to make the most money by selling off herds of cattle. So here we have the board. We have a big cool little dice pen that gets put together so when you roll dice it doesn't go out. We have a bunch of different buildings that will have some special actions. And then we have the pastures in which you will wrangle up the cows and bring them home to put into herds and sell them. Let's talk about how a turn works. Before we do that, I want you to understand how to sell cattle because this is the main way, the whole thing that you're trying to do in the game. There's different races of cattle. So we have a well, white one, we have a I call this on the cookies and cream one, you know, there's brown ones, there's gold ones, all different races. You can be working on different herds at the same time, but in this case we have just white. You do actually get some cattle tiles to start the game, a different amount depending on which ones you take and which numbers they have. But let's just show you this for an example. We have uh, the four tile here, and what happens is once your first uh, tile is here, once your first cow of that herd is there, the next one you have to pretty much decide whether you're going to be going ascending in value or descending in value. So if I was going descending in value, anything lower than a four would work there. A three would work, a two would work, but um, if I had done this, then that means now I'm forced to be going ascending for the rest of the turn. The tiles only range from one to 12. So let's actually say we started with this, okay? And then our next tile we brought in was this, which now that tells us we're going ascending. The next tile we go in, it, we, get, we get into our herd is this. And let's say the next one is this. Well, this one clearly is no longer in ascending order. So this stops and then this herd gets sold off. And the way you calculate the, sport, the score is one, two, three tiles times the largest number on any of the tiles in this herd, the large number. So it's 11, because that's the largest number, times three. This would get me $33, and now this would start my new herd of white cows. And that's essentially the main scoring mechanism. Again, you could be working on multiple uh, races of these at the same time. That's, that's essentially the heart of how you're scoring in this game. Here you can see the board, all the different pastures with all the different types of cows and numbers there. And when any time one of these pastures gets refilled or filled at the beginning of the game, essentially as soon as the, the, the numbers from left to right equal 20 or more, you stop putting tiles. And depending on the amount of players, you might stop early as well. But this is pretty much what the pastures look like. So one player is the start player. They get the one uh, little black little cowboy. I like how all the people's players are cowboys there. They're not just normal meeples. And you have a certain amount of dice depending on the amount of players that are playing. And you roll it in the pen. And of course I miss... <laughs> so we have all these dice. Now with all these dice, everyone is going to take uh, at least two actions. They're going to select any two dice. So it starts with the starting player and they have the most choices. They may want to take a six and a five and use these to do their actions. And let's talk about that. So they can take any two of these dice to do some actions. But let's say I took actually a six and a four. And let's say I'm going to do both my actions on the cows, which you don't have to do. But you see these, there's large numbers and small numbers. Now, for each of these dice, I have a six and a four, you can place one of your gauchos on a cow that has the large number of any one of these dice. So I could say this one, uh, let's go four. Let's say I want to go for this white cow. Boom, I put this there. My guy's standing up, which means he has claimed them. Nobody can steal this guy from the pasture if my guy's standing there. Now, that's, I've used the four dice to get the big four. Now, we see some of these have little numbers, too. I have a 6 here. This one's a 12, so I would usually need two dice to get there. But there's a little number 6, so what I can do here is place my goucher laying down for the 6. What this means is that I'm kind of claimed this cow, but he's kind of sleeping on the job. So someone else, I'll show you how later, can actually kick my guy off there and claim it before these cows actually come back home to be sold. We'll talk about that later as well. Now, on a, on a subsequent, that would have been my whole turn. Boom, I've done two actions. Um, I'm done. There's some special actions you can do. We'll talk about those later. But for die placement, that's what I would have done. And then we have, um, later on in a subsequent turn, if I had another six, I can, do, I can stand this guy up now because it's a small six and then he's claimed. So again, you're either playing the big number and claiming him right away, or you're playing the small number, kind of half claiming him, hoping no one else kicks you off. 
and then getting them hopefully later with the same value, and that's that. Now you'll notice there's some guys here. Uh, some of these start the game like this. You can add guys to some of these. We'll talk about that in a moment too. Uh, in addition to the dice, you can, you can use any of these workers to do special actions. We'll talk about those in a minute as well. But here, now it would go to the next player after I'm done with my, with my actions. They would take two dice, they do their actions. The third player would go. And then when it's down to the fourth player, they've got three dice to choose from. They, they're gonna select two of these three. And then after that round, this passes to the next player. So it kind of evens out who has the most dice to choose from and who doesn't. That's pretty much how you use the dice in getting the cattle and, and how a round works. Let's talk about all the other things you can do on your turn. Now, if I didn't want to use my dice to uh, put my gaucho on a cow, I can use these dice to place somebody on some of these special action spots that you can use on a later round. So let's talk about some of these. So you can use a one, two, or three die, place it there, and then you could place your guy here and then always when you place these you can't use them right away they're placed there but you can use them on a subsequent round when you're using your dice you can do them in any order you can use your dice you can use a special action you can use one die then a special action then another die doesn't matter but you're always using at least two dice and then, a, and then possibly as many special actions as you'd like so we got one two or three we go here this allows us to essentially sell our herd early and get a $5 bonus. So you don't have to wait. Remember I told you with a cows, when they go out of order, that's when it triggers the sale. Well, you might wanna sell faster for some reasons. Uh, and then you could do that at that point and get five extra dollars, that's what that one does. This one gets activated with a one, two, or three. Gives you a third die that round of any value you want, which is pretty awesome. And then this one is one, two, or three. And when you bring a cow in, you can put that tile in any spot of your herd, uh, which is really good because you might not want to sell them right away. For example, if I had a four in my herd and um, a two, and I got this nine, well, if I put it here, it's no longer uh, a, a descending and it's gonna make me sell. But with this action, I can now place them anywhere, that one, even in the beginning. So now I can keep this train going because again, it's gonna be worth more money in the end. That's what this spot does. This one is the, the, the bandit allows you to essentially, you activate it with a four. So you'd have to use one of your four dice and put a guy there and on a later round you can activate it. Basically steal anybody's cow from their herd. So this is kind of in front of them off the board. They've already claimed them. They've already been in their herd. We'll talk about how that happens later. And you can steal that from them. And when you do, they get the face value of nine points, but you get to put this in yours, which is probably gonna get you more points if you're stealing that. That's sort of the bandit there. This one is activated with a five. And then later on you can either Take two of your gauchos that are laying down on a cow and stand them up, which is cool because now that means that they're not going to get claimed from the pasture by anybody but you. Or you can take anybody's um, gaucho that's laying down and kick them off and put yours on it. So if this blue guy was here, I could have acted, activated that spot, kicked him off, and I would have claimed it just like that. He would have gotten the 12 points for being you know, kicked off. He would have gotten that, but now I've claimed that and I can't get booted off that uh, until that comes back to my herd and then it can get stolen by the bandit, but it's good for now. Yeah, this is at least gonna be mine for most of the game. And the last spot, you have to use a six to get a guy here and then on a, on a subsequent turn, you can get this. And you basically look at these four tiles that are secret and you can choose one, put your gaucho on it, claim it and put it anywhere on the board, a pasture, a, a pasture spot. So I could take one of these guys, I could put them in any of the em empty spots and claim them. Now, if you take two of those, they, they both have to be a value of four or less. Otherwise, you can take one of them. Those are also the special action spots. Now, all those action spots can be basically used at any time during your turn. This is the only one that kind of happens, um, you know, when you at a specific time when, when cattle are being brought in to your herd. So let's talk about when that happens. So let's say it's the end of the round. All four of us have taken a turn. The, all of our actions are over. And you look at the pastures. If, if all the tiles have somebody on them, standing or, or, or sleeping, uh, this will, this basically, these will be brought home by the, those people. So essentially these two ones would go in front of red and this one would go in front of green. This one would stay there because he is not uh, actively claiming them. He's kind of sleeping. So these would come off the board. Red would get these two guys here. Essentially I would add them to my herd. If I had more, I would always add them to the right like I showed you before. And maybe I didn't have any cows of those colors and those are my, the first of my two little herds there of those different races. And once all those have been uh, taken off, um, it then gets refilled again up to 20. So we would refill this row until we got to uh, 20. And there we go. Or if you run into a player thing there, three or four players, we, we got four so we can go all the way out. And it would stop and then that would end the round and we would continue those rounds. This would continue until all these tiles run out. Once these tiles run out, 
There's basically one more normal round where we have dice actions and special actions. Then after that, there's just a round where people are using special actions only. Then we go to where everybody who's th at that point still has somebody claimed standing up. They can bring them into their herd and then everybody sells off every cow in their herd like normal. Uh, it's actually the only time you can sell a cow with, with a herd with just one cow in it. And then you add up all the points and whoever has the most points is the winner. And keep in mind this game, uh, it has a 100 and a 200 counter because you're supposed to make a lot of money in this game. Whoever has the most money at the end of the game there is the winner. All right, there's El Gaucho. Wow, I was actually really impressed with this game. This is an excellent uh, medium weight Euro game. Now, I I'd say it's medium because, you know, a lot of times you'll have a lot of choices, especially if you're the first player and you're rolling all those dice and you're like, whoa, I've got a lot of choices here. What should I do? Should I put the bolt on cows? Should I stand one guy up? Or should I put two lay down? Or should I put one there and then do some special actions? There's a lot of things you can think about, but it still moves pretty fast. Um, obviously, because of that, it can be AP prone. We did not run into that too much, but if you have people in your group that are super AP, uh, analysis paralysis where they, they, get, they get stunned and they just think over things, they might not be the best ones for this game because they might just be stunned by the amount of choices if they're early in the in the round. Now typically after the game starts getting going and you're starting to collect, you know, you're starting to claim certain races of herds and you've got some action spaces out there, usually, you know, you kind of know what you're going to want to do on your turn and when the dice when the dice are rolled, you can see, okay, are there dice, if those are there, I'm going to do this. So it's not that bad. It's just, you know, if you're the first player and you see all the dice and it's early in the game, there can be too many choices, but it gets better as the game goes on as you start going down a certain path. So don't let that sway you, just be aware of it. Um, the game, I, I really like, I like how it feels like a puzzle and it's an evolving puzzle. Uh, as you know, those, those, those different races of cows come out and you're trying to figure out which ones to get, which ones to, you know, whether I'm just gonna half get them by laying down or, or claim them. I mean, every, you gotta be really efficient in this game. And then as those cows come off the board, new ones come out, the puzzle's changing again. And I like how you can use those special actions and as you put them there, you can't use them till, till subsequent turns, but you can have a bunch of people out there and you can have like one big turn where you're like, okay, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do this action, this is gonna turn this die to this, and I'm gonna take one of these tiles, and I'm gonna claim this, and you can have a lot of people like saved up a bunch of actions and then boom, had like a blockbuster turn once or twice per game. Uh, and then towards the end, you know, there is, there can be, some, there should be, and there can be some meanness to this game where you're stealing. If someone's got their sleeping gouch on one of those cows, boom, you kick that guy out, you put your guy in there, he's claimed. Or towards the end of the game, you know, I needed a 12 from another, from another, uh, from another race. At the end of the game, I was able to steal it from somebody else, use the other special ability to slot it in anywhere, get it going. Uh, so there is there is that too. So there is some meanness there. It doesn't happen too too often, but when it happens, man, it hurts because you pretty much use that when you're really going to demolish somebody or make it really good for you, which makes it usually really bad for someone else. But overall, I think it was a really I think it's an excellent game. I love the board. I love the artwork. I love the little pen that's there on the board. So when you're throwing the dice in, it keeps it in there. Uh, overall, I just I just thought the puzzle was great. I thought the different choices you have are are satisfying. It makes me want to play this game over and over again. Uh, and, and then mixing those up with the different special actions and being able to do those in any order you know do it you, you know making your dice either on the cows or in the special actions and then taking some of the special actions from the previous turns or any combination of those you can do as many of those special actions that you have from previous turns and you can do them in any order uh, it's just it gives you a lot of uh, a lot of decisions to make um, and that moving puzzle of trying to get your, your guys in order from up to down or down to up uh, for me was very enjoyable and this is one that I would probably typically overlook but for some reason I was interested in it, I gave it a shot and I'm very glad I did. El Gaucho, a great, excellent medium weight Euro game. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>